Yeah, so CloudNalu is a Bitcoin services provider. And on our platform or on our website, you can easily sign up and buy Bitcoin, <clears throat> excuse me, super quickly, um, just by linking your bank account and uh, without paying a fee, actually. Um, we don't charge order processing fees. So people often find that buying Bitcoin from us is really the cheapest way to acquire Bitcoin. And the reason being is that our business model is actually based on services that we provide, um, not collecting these order fees. So if you want help setting up a multi-signature wallet or retirement account or a point of sale solution for your business in Hawaii, that's where our services come in. Um, so we're really focused on providing those resources and quality help and really a helping hand to Hawaii-based residents and businesses looking to onboard to Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. Um, and to learn more, I'd encourage you to uh, schedule a discovery call with us. These calls are free and they really just help us walk you through our services and help you formulate a plan for getting your business or your family or yourself onboarded to Bitcoin. Um, we also do a weekly webinar on every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Hawaii time and uh, that's live on YouTube and our website um, and our website is cloudnalu.com. Um, I always should do a little introduction about myself. I've been an entrepreneur on Maui since 2013 and uh, started Cloud Nalu in 2016, uh, focused on helping businesses integrate with technology. Uh, um, and I also have done some work as a tech integration specialist with the Department of Education here, with the schools. Um, as a developer, I've worked with blockchains like Ethereum, creating NFTs and engaging in uh, DeFi smart contracts and building my own smart contracts, writing code with Solidity. Um, but for the last year, I've been focused solely on Bitcoin development and especially with the Lightning Network, which I'm super stoked to talk about today um, because there's a lot of really amazing development work that's going on in the Bitcoin Lightning Network and uh, all these second layer solutions that we're building on top of Bitcoin. Um, finally, people often ask why we're a Bitcoin only company. And the short answer is that we our clients really need a way to secure their own wealth and with bitcoin we can simply build better more secure products and services on bitcoin um, and the infrastructure around bitcoin so we can help clients put bitcoin in the retirement account accept it at their business or safely set it up to pass on to the next generation and um, other cryptocurrencies might spike in value like in the short term and everybody gets really excited about it. But if you're a good trader, maybe you can take advantage of that. But for most people and uh, the clients that we work with, um, they're really just looking for a good way to store their wealth. And they'll, they'll, if they engage in other cryptocurrencies, they often find out that that's not a good way risky that's a risky way to secure your own wealth um, for the long term so and many of our friends and families are clients so we wouldn't really want to sell them anything else besides bitcoin so that's that's our answer to that um, i'll start my slides that's cool All right, and we can see it. Hopefully I can full screen it. All right, good to go. Uh, can you see my screen well? Um, it was okay, um, Liam, but then now it's shifted towards the left. So, okay, now it's great. Now it's good. Okay. 
Oh, uh, um, it, it shifted again. I don't know why. It's good and it shifts. This okay, is good. I'll keep it off, off full screen then. Cool. So uh, you're here to talk about Bitcoin. This is for educational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, please yeah. don't construe this. Yep. Sorry. I think you might. The other mode was better. This one. Okay. This is good now. Okay. Did you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. I got to present it again. This is good. <laughs> uh, let's see. I do have some notes today, so I want to be able to see those. Sorry. Oh, I see. Um, Let's see, how's that? This looks good. Right now, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> right now, it looks good. All right. Um, so not financial advice, and I will try to keep this pretty high level, um, but we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. Um, Ellen, can you just see that Bitcoin Lightning Network text? Uh, I just see the slide that says you're here to talk Bitcoin and not financial advice. So sorry. All right, Bitcoin Lightning Network. Yes, I'm seeing the screen now. Here we go, sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry. So uh, yeah, this is really exciting stuff. Um, uh, so we have the Bitcoin Network and then we have the Bitcoin Lightning Network, which is what we're talking about today. Um, we'll talk about how it works and how you can use it. Um, so hopefully by now, through all these awesome webinars we've been doing with the HTDC, you're familiar with what cryptocurrency is. Um, and most notably, we have Bitcoin. And uh, we have, should look at the evolution of how we got here and how we got to Bitcoin. So we've had digital currency for quite some time. And these are our dollars secured in our bank accounts um secured by centralized authorities and banks and uh today we have bitcoin um secured by cryptography and a decentralized network of computers called a block or a, called a blockchain and there's no trust needed only verification and we verify the owner of bitcoin using a process called hashing um and we can with that process, verify that there will only ever be a 21 million Bitcoin supply. And uh, there only will ever be 21 million Bitcoin ever in existence. Um, and we can see this um, easily on the blockchain uh, because the blockchain is super transparent. And we can see that 89.6% of the Bitcoin has already been mined or issued. So. You could argue that Bitcoin is simply the next evolution of money. If we zoom out and look at what has been used as money over time, we can see that money evolves. And humans began using uh, collectibles as a system of money thousands of years ago. Um, bartering doesn't work simply. So we need money as a tool. And it's a very important tool for passing value from one person to another. And as humans became more global, money also evolved as different kinds of money from empires competed with each other and based on uh, what was seen as better money. So then not long ago, we began issuing um, notes based on our deposits of gold and silver at banks. And uh, we use those notes to pass value on uh, to pass value between each other more easily. So it provided a sense of convenience with those notes. And uh, today we've been 
um, printing money, a lot of money. So the, especially digitally and this new money, uh, with this new money, people are recognizing that their the money that they've been holding, their traditional money, isn't scarce. And Bitcoin tries to fix that. Um, and if we look at the property of scarcity, it's really this most important, the most important property of money. Um, because if money is scarce, then people can recognize that it has security behind it. It's a good store of value, meaning that holding on to it would allow you to hold on to your wealth and that nobody can take away your wealth. And that's a really important property of money. Um, but when you have centralized authorities or governments with the privilege and power to print money, they can inevitably do it too much and reduce the scarcity of that money. Um, so some people will be closer to the new money supply and some people may not be so close to the new money supply and uh, may not get the benefits of that new money being issued. So it's scarcity is really a really important fundamental property of money um, to make sure money is just, again, a good tool for exchanging value between people. Um, and the consequences of manipulating the scarcity of money are quite significant. Um, first, we have the uh, that it causes exploitation and misallocation of resources. So it's hard to gauge pricing for things. Um, commodities like oil uh, can skyrocket when you manipulate the scarcity of money. Uh, we saw wood skyrocket this year in price. Um, and simply it steals wealth in human time, especially from people who cannot save in traditional assets. And it causes inequality and division. Um, because again, some people that are close to the new money supply uh, get the benefits of being so close to the money supply and getting that new money um, and being able to buy assets with that new money. While many other people are... Uh, continuously trying to uh, grow their money by working harder. And, and that's something really hard to do when uh, you have all the money printing on going on. So Bitcoin scarcity um, is really important to understand because it's really the fundamental property that gives Bitcoin its value. So there's a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoin and we can divide that Bitcoin into tiny amounts called sats or satoshis, um, named after the creator of Bitcoin. And this is really important to understand for the Lightning Network, because in the Lightning Network, you're often sending smaller amounts of Bitcoin uh, to people. And we denominate that often in satoshis or sats. So there's 100 million sats per Bitcoin. And this scarcity is also written into the Bitcoin protocol, uh, meaning that uh, the code, the open source code of Bitcoin um, that's distributed to everybody that's a part of the network um, uh, has that code. And uh, in order to change the code, you'd have to change the code for the entire network and uh, you wouldn't actually be able to change the 21 million uh, supply of Bitcoin because that's written into each block of Bitcoin, basically. And we can get more into that. Um, but it's also the scarcity is enforced by the Bitcoin network. Um, no one person and in institution can change the rules. Um, so this is really important to understand. And again, it's what has made Bitcoin so valuable over time. <clears throat> Um, you can look at the price of Bitcoin and understand that, yeah, it's really solidified itself as a long-term store of value. It might be volatile in the short term, and we've seen a lot of that in the last year. Um, but in the long term, holding on to Bitcoin generally increases your purchasing power with that Bitcoin. So people have really recognize Bitcoin as the cryptocurrency that is the store of value, the money for the long term. 
Um, uh, there are other cryptocurrencies that might, again, spike in value short term, but they generally come down and they generally actually lose purchasing power to Bitcoin. So that's why Bitcoin is such an important store of value and we can use it as a base reserve asset, um, especially on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Um, so we have some fundamental properties of money. Um, good money would be a good store of value. And again, Bitcoin has proven itself of that. It's proven itself as a unit of account. It's easy to understand how much Bitcoin is uh, worth. Uh, it's un un easy to understand that one Bitcoin here equals one Bitcoin there. Um, it's easy to uh, send Bitcoin across the world. Um, but as a medium of, of exchange, this final uh, property of money, uh, Bitcoin has, uh, you could say that it hasn't proven itself as a good medium of exchange yet. So it's still today uh, quite challenging to actually use Bitcoin as money um, when you're paying for a cup of coffee or uh, sending money for your rent to your landlord. Um, but uh, this another word for this medium of exchange is a payment system. And with the Lightning Network, we are really developing these uh, final fundamental properties of Bitcoin as money. And I would argue today we can give this another check and uh, finally prove that Bitcoin is money. So. <clears throat> Um, to put it into perspective, uh, what Bitcoin really is, is scarce digital pro property on an open source monetary network and anyone can use it. And that's why it's so important. And we will look at using it today on the lightning network, but there are some challenges to using Bitcoin, um, especially as a medium of exchange. And one, we have the transaction fees. So <clears throat> the transaction fees of Bitcoin for sending Bitcoin over the main blockchain, um, we have to pay a transaction fee to the miners. And that can be anywhere between like five to $20 um, worth of Bitcoin. And for that reason, it makes it uh, pretty much uh, kind of silly to use Bitcoin on the mainnet for paying for a cup of coffee, right? So if your coffee is $4 and you have to pay a transaction fee of $10, that doesn't really make sense. Um, we also have the confirmation time of using Bitcoin on the main network of Bitcoin, um, which can be up to six hours for a transaction to confirm. So waiting six hours at your local coffee shop for that transaction to confirm doesn't really make sense as well either. Um, but we have this really great immutable blockchain, um, this settlement network where transactions are finalized. And uh, again, you can't just print more Bitcoin. Um, we have all these benefits of anybody in the world being able to download this entire blockchain um, for only a small amount of hard drive space. Um, so somewhere around 350 gigabytes to 400 gigabytes. Anybody can join the Bitcoin network with that small hard drive space and download this blockchain and know that it's super secure, that it's unchangeable, um, that nobody's going to try to change it in the future and that we have that 21 million fixed supply. Um, so this blockchain is a database underlying the transactions or underlying the Bitcoin network. And it's made up of blocks or batches of transactions. And this you could say is the base layer of Bitcoin. It is the final settlement network. Um, it is where all Bitcoin is finally settled. Um, so if you could uh, think about how gold gets final settlement is you'd have to like have a bunch of gold and then have a bunch of like armored 
people, uh, security guys around you, and you could send that gold to another country and it would finally settle when that gold finally reaches that destination, right? With Bitcoin, we have the final settlement on the blockchain. And we can do that uh, pretty instantaneously, um, but within more likely like one to six hours uh, of a transaction time. But it's super secure, unhackable, um, and it's an open decentralized network. Um, but there are limitations to this blockchain, which we've kind of talked about. And one is that the transactions can take time. Um, those transactions require fees. And there, we have limitations in our ability to program those transactions. So uh, it's um, hard to code much else into uh, those Bitcoin transactions besides just, I want to send this amount of Bitcoin to this address. And that's all you can really do on the main net, the final settlement layer of the Bitcoin blockchain. So how do we overcome these limitations? And we can look at how we've overcome similar limitations in the past. And we do that through layered solutions. So if you go back to our hierarchy of money, we used to have gold as like our final settlement layer. Um, and on top of that, we issued bills of exchange or notes from our central banks. And the idea was that you could give that note back to the central bank and they would reissue your gold back. They'd give you your gold back. Um, today, that doesn't work. We have our system of U.S. treasuries at the bottom. We have the Fedwire system or the central banking system on top of that. And then we have the payment system, which is what most of us use to transact with. Most of us don't send a wire too often every year, right? Um, you might do it maybe uh, when you buy a house or something like that. Then you'd be interacting with the Fedwire system, which is more of a final settlement system, right? Um, for large amounts and that sort of thing, when you need that final settlement. But in our day-to-day -day life, we interact with the payment system. And um, uh, you've recognized uh, many of the payment system uh, solutions that we've built um, as this third layer to our monetary network. And uh, so with Visa, um, Visa allows you to seemingly interact uh, pretty instantaneously. Um, when you use Square at your coffee shop, uh, Squares allows you to seemingly interact instantaneously, but it's really not final settlement, right? It's not interacting on that Fedwire system yet. In fact, it takes sometimes weeks for that, those transactions to actually clear between the federal banks or the central banks. And with Bitcoin, we can also have layers to Bitcoin, and this is our solution. So we have Bitcoin as the base layer, that final settlement layer. And then we have these second and third layers being built on top of Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin, they, they can always finally settle on the base layer of Bitcoin. But on the second and third layer solutions, we can develop uh, different technologies and allow us to have some of the conveniences that we expect um, from a monetary network, uh, such as instant transactions and Nobody wants to pay a fee, right? So the Lightning Network is our solution to that. <clears throat> um, on the Lightning Network, we can send Bitcoin and we can expect to have instantaneous transactions. So uh, they can immediately and finally settle, um, but do it in an instantaneous way. And we can... Uh, we can allow ourselves to not actually pay uh, significant fees. They're basically free or zero cost um, to make those transactions on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. And finally, we can program payments. So if you wanted to come up with a game or a way to stream money to somebody, uh, we can program that on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Um, and we can do that in really, really tiny amounts. Um, 
So if you wanted to send like one cent or 0.01 cent on the Bitcoin of Bitcoin on the Bitcoin Lightning Network, we could really easily do that. And if you wanted to program that 0.01 cents to send every second or every 10 minutes, we can easily do that on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Um, if you compare it to our traditional system, it's pretty much impossible or silly at least to try to pay for um, even make a 10 cent payment on the Visa network, right? Um, if you used like Square or something, making a 10 cent payment through Square would cost you uh, at least 30 cents plus a 3% transaction fee, right? Or cost the business that transaction fee. Um, so with the Bitcoin Lightning Network, we have all these great benefits. Um, we'll do a little demo and I actually recorded a video so we can make it quick. Um, but here's a video of a transaction on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. So we can scan this code, this invoice. It's like a QR code. It's requesting us to pay that in SATs. We approve the payment. And then instantaneously, the other wallet over here, that Moon Wallet, gets paid. And they've received the Bitcoin and it's final settlement, peer to peer. And uh, we can uh, know that we're using Bitcoin and all the benefits of that. And again, we can do that instantaneously and nobody paid a significant transaction fee. So with the Lightning Network, um, the best way I've found to think about this is that it's like the tool here, this kind of game. Um, it's called an abacus. And some of us have probably used this way back in like elementary school or something. But the idea is uh, that you can use math to basically um, send value from one side to another side. Um, and with Bitcoin, what we do is we create payment channels. So this blue line might be a payment channel. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say six sats on one side and one, two, three, four sats on the other side of the payment channel. And we have peers on each side of that payment channel. And in order to send sats from the blue payment channel to let's say the left side of the blue payment channel um, to the green, we could do that just by sending uh, Bitcoin or sats from the left side to the right side of the blue payment channel. And then the blue payment channel can push the red payment uh, in Satoshi's to the other side, the left side of the red. And the red can then push one uh, sat out from the white bar, um, the white payment channel to the right side of the white payment channel. And then the white payment channel can finally complete the payment to the green uh, person. So uh, hopefully that is a little bit of an indication of where we're going with this, but I will summarize it in a diagram here. So. Let's say we have two parties, um, two nodes on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. We have Bob on the left and Alice on the right. And Bob wants to send value to Alice in an in to send value. Now, what happens if Bob wants to send value to other people on the Bitcoin Lightning Network? Well, he could have his own payment channels with those other people. But one really cool thing about the Bitcoin Lightning Network is as long as Alice has a payment channel with those other people, Bob can send Bitcoin from himself through Alice peer to peer to any other person on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. And that's what makes the Lightning Network um, allow us to still interact in a peer to peer fashion. but um, not need to have payment channels with every single other person on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Um, uh, so how we do this is we, again, set up payment channels and we have nodes on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. And that's what we see on these 
uh, uh, as these dots. Um, so each of us can have a node, or you can be you can use another wallet or a service provider's node, um, and use their payment channels. Um, but how this works is again, if I was this red dot over here on the left and wanted to send value to let's say the blue one of the blue dots um, one of the blue nodes we could do that um, through any of these payment channels uh, that we have set up between nodes and the really cool thing is that the bitcoin lightning network uh, immediately finds the easiest and quickest route to that other node that other person and when we close these payment channels we can close them out eventually and we'll see a final transaction on the main bitcoin settlement layer the main net the blockchain and that's really great because uh when we're transacting with each other um if we're sending if we're streaming sats from each other and we're streaming we're doing like a thousand payments in like a minute or something we don't want to settle on the main net bitcoin blockchain for each of those payments, right? It's kind of like a bar tab. You don't want to settle with your bar tab um, at a bar. You don't want to settle with your bartender um, after every single beer that you bought because that'd be annoying to have to sign your credit card and the bartender would have to go to the cash register and do that every single drink. So what we do is we just settle the final balance of the payments um, that are owed. and. Hopefully now you're asking, how can you join the Bitcoin Lightning Network? And the first step is to run a Bitcoin Lightning node. Um, so this is, you could say this is the hardest option, but it's the most uh, uh, Bitcoiner option. You can actually interact with the big Bitcoin Lightning Network yourself and verify your own transactions, and you don't need a trusted third party. Um, so running a Bitcoin Lightning node means that you're running Bitcoin Core software and you're also running a Lightning Network, a protocol, um, to use the Bitcoin Core software. And second, you need to have some payment channels. So if you had just one payment channel with one person, yeah, you could send Bitcoin pretty easily, but it's generally good to have about a dozen payment channels at least. Um, with various peers on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. And third, you want to be running uh, your node and keeping it running. And you want to keep your payment channels managed and uh, with a healthy balance, um, generally so that you have a healthy balance on uh, your entire uh, set of payment channels. Um, and you want to maintain that healthy balance by actually using the Bitcoin Lightning Network and uh, exploring at least using built on Lightning applications. Um, so you could call these Lightning applications L apps, and uh, they're uh, applications that are built on the Lightning protocol that use Bitcoin, um, but are built on this second layer solution. Um, Uh, so we can look at the first step of running a Bitcoin Lightning node. Um, you can <clears throat> uh, use a small computer. Um, you can use your laptop to run a node, um, but it's generally best to have a small computer like a Raspberry Pi 4 and a small external hard drive. Um, you're going to download the entire Bitcoin blockchain on that hard drive, and then you're going to be running Bitcoin Core. Um, Umbral and MyNode are good examples. Um, and actually, Node isn't available anymore, I found out. Um, but uh, Umbral is a great option. MyNode is a great option for running Bitcoin Core on your small computer. And um, you can access the Lightning Network with those options. You also have these new options that are cloud-based service options. Um, so Voltage.io, uh, you can spin up a node with them, or Blockstream Greenlight, you can also uh, use their service. And you're basically subscribing to their service um, to allow you to easily uh, have 
would always operating and always on and accessible from anywhere since so the cloud there's option. You can access your Umbral or my Casa node or my node from anywhere, um, but it takes arguably maybe a little more finessing. Um, uh, you can also, again, use another custodial node or service provider. So we have the hard way and the easy way. And this easy way means that you're using, you're trusting the node of Blue Wallet or Breeze Wallet or Cloud Nalu can set you up with our node. And um, we don't have access to your private keys, but we are verifying your transactions for you on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so you're still requesting that we verify the transactions for you. Um, uh, but all these companies have a uh, good reason to uh, win the trust of our clients um, as a service provider. Um, and again, we don't have access to your private keys for your Bitcoin. So we wouldn't be able to somehow steal Bitcoin from you if you're using our node. Um, and <clears throat> we have this second step, which is opening payment channels. And we can use uh, Lightning Network apps such as Zap, Zeus, or Thunderhub to manage those payment channels. And again, we want to open channels with a variety of peers. Um, so maybe some could be your friends, some you might want to be uh, nodes with bigger or a longer list of payment channels, and uh, some could be just some other random person. Um, and then you can you're able to stream sats easily or send Bitcoin through those payments channels uh, easily and use all of their payment channels that they've already set up. Again, you can also use somebody else's node and their payment channels if you want. Um, and that's the easy way. <clears throat> and the third step, again, is to use Lightning. So what can you use Lightning for? It's uh, right now, it's definitely for small payments. Um, so you can use it to send value uh, to somebody across the world. Um, many people are using Lightning for remittance payments. So if you think about the remittance, uh, how remittance work is, you, and traditionally, you'd have to you know, send uh, money through a uh, remittance service provider or money processor. And by the time it gets to somebody else in, for example, Asia, they might have like 20% less of the money that you initially sent uh, because of all those third-party payments processors that the money has to go through. And with the Bitcoin Lightning Network, we don't have to deal with any of that. And I'll do a quick demo of our uh, Cloud Nalu implementation uh, for remittance payments in a bit. Um, but moving on, you can also use Bitcoin, the Bitcoin Lightning Network at storefronts. So your local coffee shops, restaurants, um, anywhere that you have to pay with Bitcoin and you wanna do that free and instantaneously. You can use it for online shopping. Um, Bit Refill is a really great tool to website to use for online shopping. Um, you can basically pay at Amazon or uh, uh, what's that steakhouse, Outback Steakhouse, basically any like major chain restaurant or uh, major chain online website store such as Adidas, um, Nike, as I said, Amazon, any online shopping storefronts, you can pay using a service provider like BitRefill um, to make payments over the Lightning Network to those uh, e-commerce stores. Um, you can use it for online gaming. So you can uh, create games where you're basically streaming small amounts of Bitcoin, streaming sats to the game players. Um, you could think about this as like if you have a Mario Kart style game and you're going around picking up little coins and instead of those little coins just being points or whatever, they're actual Bitcoin, um, small bits of Bitcoin that you can collect. Um, so this is, this is a really powerful tool that could make uh, gaming uh, much more interesting. 
um, and already is. And uh, finally, you can, it's just a really great way to stream payments. So we have podcasting 2.0, um, which is growing uh, very quickly in popularity, where instead of podcasters needing to advertise um, and you know say a bunch of advertisements in the beginning, they can just collect Bitcoin payments over the Lightning Network um, by their people that are listening to their podcast. Um, so they might be listening to their podcast and those participants might be streaming Bitcoin payments like every minute or every second for listening to that podcast. Um, so uh, you could pay somewhere around, let's say, three cents per minute of Bitcoin to the podcaster um, for creating that podcast for you. Um, so other content creators. Um, we have yalls.org, which is kind of like a news website um, where you can pay with Bitcoin over the Lightning Network and unlock news articles or unlock tutorial articles um, so that those content creators can collect like a cent of value for you unlocking that article. Um, we also have Twitter, um, Jack. Dorsier has announced that Twitter will be integrating with the Lightning Network so that um, on your Twitter, you can stream sats or Bitcoin to other people or other participants on the Twitter network uh, for either their content or just to say, hey, I really like your post. Um, here's some Bitcoin. Here's some sats. Um, and again, we can do that for zero cost and instantaneously. And those Twitter participants can then be collecting Bitcoin for their Twitter posts or engaging with uh, their audience. Um, finally, another cool uh, kind of experimental way to use the Lightning Network um, that I've been interested in is to pay and power your electric vehicles. So we have Andy Schroer here. Um, for, for you to come to his house with uh, your car and you can use his power to charge your car and the power station will collect a Bitcoin payment denominated in sats over the Lightning Network for every watt hour of charge that your car is using. And the really key, key thing to understand here is that Andy doesn't have to uh, set you up with the account um, he doesn't have to trust any third-party payments providers. He just has to trust the Bitcoin Lightning Network um, and use the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so again, a great way to program uh, payments over the internet. And if you think about it, we have the internet as this database that we've used for so long, but we haven't really used it for a payments network yet. And the Bitcoin Lightning Network is really the uh, first implementation of actually using uh, the internet as a way to transact with each other um, uh, and to stream value to each other and maybe even start paying for data um, or charging for your own personal data use. So you could say that uh, instead of this model that we've had for let's say the last 10 years, where our data is kind of being stolen from us on the internet and then resold to other advertisers or companies, we are now finally able to regain the power to our data and um, we could make money or make Satoshis um, or Bitcoin off of our data. So a really powerful tool. Um, this is what a Lightning Network invoice you looks like. Um, so this is on our platform. Uh, we have kind of a QR code looking thing up here and we can scan this with our phone or down here, we can just copy this long string of characters and we can use that to make the payment. Um, so I will uh, show you how to log into our app and use the Lightning Network. Um, <clears throat> so we have our website, cloudnala.com. We can easily log in. And I'll do this super quick because we just have a few more minutes left. 
<clears throat> and I'll authenticate with my fingerprint. <clears throat> and then in three, two, one, I am locked in. There we go. All right, so we're in our dashboard and I can easily make a payment over the Lightning Network um, with this pay feature, so like that. And then I have my US dollar cash balance and we can make a payment with US dollars over the Bitcoin network, over the Bitcoin Lightning Network and we'll send Bitcoin on our your behalf. Um, so in order to do this, we just need a lightning invoice and we just have to paste that string of characters in here. So I'm going to pretend I'm in somewhere else in the world and I'm going to open up my Bitcoin Lightning Network wallet and I'm going to create an invoice. <clears throat> Let's just say for uh, $11 and I've created that invoice <clears throat> and there it is and it looks like that QR code and I can copy the string of characters at the bottom of it and I'm just going to share that with myself over email <clears throat> and I can come to my email account and I'll see that lightning network invoice pop up into my demo email account here. There it is, I can copy this. Command C, come back to my tab and paste it in to my dashboard. And you can see that it's requesting I send $11 of USD and we're going to send 23,385 sats of Bitcoin on behalf of you. So you're paying with your cash balance, but the invoice will be settled with Bitcoin on your behalf. So I can click send payment. <clears throat> and that other person across the world just instantly got a successful payment in Bitcoin. Uh, so a really powerful tool um, that we can use over the Lightning Network. You can also uh, have a point of sale solution through us uh, that uses the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Um, you can, we can set that up for you at your business and you can collect Bitcoin payments uh, over the Lightning Network at your business instantaneously. And we talked about that in the last webinar, so I won't dive too much into that. Um, but uh, the main steps, again, are creating a Lightning Network invoice, scanning that invoice with your device, um, copying and pasting that string, and then paying with Bitcoin. So who uses the Lightning Network? Well, a lot of people. Um, it's growing very quickly. This Lightning Network capacity chart. So there is about 2,013 Bitcoin in total on the Bitcoin Lightning Network within those payment channels. Um, so. We're keeping that Bitcoin in the Lightning Network because it's so easy to send to and from each other within those payment channels. And uh, it's growing very quickly. Um, the people that will be the first to use the Bitcoin Lightning Network are really, if you think about the people that are don't have access to traditional banking rails. Um, uh, so similar to how a lot of places in Africa didn't ever set up uh, phone lines. They just immediately went to cell phones. I expect a similar uh, thing to happen with the Bitcoin Lightning Network is instead of onboarding those millions of people to the banking institutions, they'll just jump straight to the Bitcoin Lightning Network and use Bitcoin as their store of value asset and medium of exchange. Um, so the Bitcoin Lightning Network has significant benefits as that store of value and payments network. It's got that superior global operability. It's an open network. Anybody can uh, be a part of it. We have cheaper and faster settlement than bank wires or credit card transactions. 
And on the Lightning Network, we can do that instantaneously and for zero cost. And it's super secure. We still are using the security of the Bitcoin network. We're still uh, attached to that fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoin, which guards us against inflation um, and really protects the security of our wealth. <clears throat> so in reminder, or in conclusion, we have Bitcoin as a scarce digital property on an open source monetary network and anyone can use it. And that's why it's so powerful. And uh, if you're interested in learning more on how you can onboard to Bitcoin or you can onboard your family or your business to Bitcoin, we'd love to bring you on as a client. Um, we're really an ally to helping you out. And uh, you can sign up at cloudnali.com and request a free discovery call with us. And we'll schedule a video call and go from there. So thank you. Thank you so much, Liam. So, you know, feel free to reach out to him if you have any other questions because we have come to the end of the session. So there isn't a lot of time for Q&A, but I just want to remind everybody that Liam did a great, you know, series of different webinars for us. So I'm going to leave the link in chat and feel free to go and visit it and rewatch um, the other webinars that he has done for us. So again, thank you so much, Liam, for today.